to be annoyed by you. No one else can annoy me like you. Act four, Chairman of the Block. This story takes place almost around the corner from Starley's apartment building, just a, few, just a few blocks away. It's about one small act of kindness leading somewhere completely unexpected. A resident of the neighborhood, Blake, Est Blake Eskin, tells the story. About a month ago, I went out one Friday evening with a friend in the East Village, where we both live. We had had a few overpriced beers at a stylish modern bar, and then just before midnight we walked north on First Avenue to a much older bar a pre-gentrification dive specializing in cheap pictures and shots of Polish cherry liqueur. On the street, we heard Frank Sinatra music blasting loud enough to wake the neighbors. Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you. As we reached 4th Street, I saw a hundred people huddled around the stoop of a six-floor tenement. Most of them were post-college, pre-childbearing types. Plus, there were some older people who probably lived on the block. Everyone seemed to have forgotten where they were headed, whether to a party or to another bar or back to bed. You will go to extremes with impossible schemes. A short, dark-haired guy in a suit stood at the top of the stoop holding a microphone. At first, I thought maybe the guy was lip-syncing because he sounded exactly like Sinatra. But after a few seconds, I realized he was doing the crooning himself. The guy looked a little like Sinatra, and he moved like him too. But this was no run-of-the-mill Sinatra impersonator. It was as if he was possessed by the spirit of Sinatra, channeling the chairman of the board, that Frank himself had emerged from retirement, dyed his hair black again, and was with us on 4th Street. She gets too hungry for dinner at 8. She adores this theater. But she never arrives late. Come over here, Susan. At the bottom she of the stoop was someone you would not ordinarily see with Frank Sinatra. An older woman with spiky salt and pepper hair and a leopard print vest was doing a spirited, if slightly awkward, tap dance on a piece of wood she had dragged out onto the sidewalk. She doesn't like crap games with barons and earls. Won't go dress to a party all up in some other girl's pearls. She won't dish the dirt with the rest of those girls. That's why this chick is a champ. After my initial confusion and my subsequent bliss, my next reaction was to wonder how this was possible. Where were the cops? The ninth precinct is a block away and New Yorkers are quick to complain about noise. And Mayor Rudolph Giuliani has made it a priority for the police to crack down on what he calls quality of life violations like these. Noise, crowds, blocking traffic, drinking in the street. But on 4th Street, everything was copacetic, and it still is. Somehow, by some quirk of fate, the show outside 124 East 4th Street has happened five Fridays in a row. The singer, Nick Drakitis, lives on the first floor of the building, and the tap dancer, Lorraine Goodman, lives on four. Gary and Wanda, who run the Garden Level Thrift Shop, put their merchandise, the chairs and overstuffed couches, on the sidewalk for the audience's comfort. She never bothered with some bum that she'd hate. I said that's why Lorraine is a champ. Nick Trakitis and Lorraine Goodman are neighbors, and, like most people who live in the same building, they didn't know much about each other. Lorraine did know, however, that Nick had a big jazz record collection. Five weeks ago, Lorraine decided she wanted to tap dance in front of the building, as a sort of therapy, she says. And she reached out to Nick, asking him to play some tunes while she tap danced that weekend. Was what happened was, I was coming home, I'll tell you exactly what happened, I was coming home, that Friday evening around 9 o'clock, and I forgot her name, and I'm walking down 4th Street from 2nd Avenue, I'm like, oh, there she is tapping, and I don't want to do this, I'm tired, I'm like, Ugh. and then I had to reach for her name in my little, um, in my uh, pocket, my, uh, what's this thing, pocket day timer, and I'm like, okay, it's Lorraine, then I walk down the street, and I say, hi, Lorraine, how are you, and she goes, oh, come on out, Nick, and join me, blah, 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 and I think she assumed I'll bring out some music, that was it. 
I don't, th- I don't think she was expecting, you know, a suit and microphone stand and, and, and the PA, the CDs, the cassettes, the whole number. Thanks to uh, Lorraine Goodman. This is the brains behind this wonderful event here. Okay. Say good evening, Lorraine. Good evening, Lorraine. <laughs> Nick's initial gesture of kindness to Lorraine, a near stranger, made her into a local celebrity and made himself into an even bigger one. There were only a handful of people watching Lorraine tap dance when Nick went outside with his instant Sinatra kit, which includes a few CDs from a series called Pocket Songs. The discs have the full Sinatra arrangements without a vocalist. The slogan is You Sing the Hits. Nick began with I've Got the World on a String. The crowd built steadily, and right away Nick had the crowd on a string, standing on the stoop had the string around his finger. What a world. What a world. What a life I'm in love. I've got a song that I sing. Nick showed me a picture taken when he was 15. He's wearing a tuxedo, his hair parted to the side, standing at a microphone and pointing back at the camera. It is a picture of a 15-year-old boy from Poughkeepsie, New York, in Frank Sinatra drag. I'm, I am basically, what I'm doing right now, I have been into since I was a kid, since I was 10 years old. We've got the world on our string and we're swinging on a rainbow. We got the string around our finger. What a world, what a life, we all are in love. Nick trained as a jazz vocalist at Boston's Berklee College of Music, moved to New York, and after a while he found a job with the Starlight Orchestra, a 16-piece band that performs at high society weddings and corporate events. The Starlight Orchestra has five vocalists, and Nick is their Sinatra specialist. Each of us in the audience had been lured by the improbability of the situation, but Nick's stage presence kept us there. Most street performers in New York go where the tourists go, since most of us natives are too busy to stop and listen. Nick singing from his stoop, however, was a gift to his own neighborhood. Nick really knows how to work a room, even when it's not a room. He weaves his neighbors' names into the lyrics. Anytime he moves it. There's Brendan, our well, lovely neighbor here. Lucky me. Hey, do Reggie. Can't you see I'm in love? Life is a beautiful thing. He plugs Gary and Wanda's thrift shop and thanks them for their help. He salutes a couple watching from a nearby fire escape. He dedicates witchcraft to a pretty blonde standing in the back row and flirts with her at the end of the song. Ooh, I got a crush on you too, baby. Ooh, you're a fine witch. Just like Frank would have done. Now it's a safe bet that if Nick and Lorraine had been breakdancing or playing conga drums, the police would have shut them down in 20 minutes tops. But the officers of the 9th Precinct fell under the same spell as the rest of us, and they couldn't bring themselves to get out of the patrol car to enforce the mayor's quality of life rules. The first week they would circle around the block, you know, speak through their megaphone, you know, they they, they would say like, you know, people please don't block the streets, you know, please keep the streets clear, and that was it. That was like the first week. The second week, they requested summer wind. They requested someone yes. through the megaphone? Through the megaphone as they were passing. The third week, the third week, the third week the, the police came and they stopped their car, held up traffic, and they said, okay, summer wind. They wanted to hear summer wind. So I, I finished night and day. I put summer wind on and uh, I went up on the steps. They manipulated their lights on the top and threw a white spotlight on me. And I started singing Summer Wind. The crowd went crazy. You know, they went nuts. And uh, they were, like, really into it. Evidently, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, that, it's, that, it is, it's that whole New York macho Italian police Irish street. It's, it is, man. And, like, evidently, what I'm doing, they connect with that. The summer wind, it came blowing in from across the sea. Of course they do. So do the black men with dreadlocks, the young white guys in Wu-Tang Clan t-shirts, the teenagers immersed in the swing lounge scene, the pot-bellied Italian men of a certain age smoking cigars. 
and sitting front row center wearing a party colored muumu, Nick's next door neighbor Jean, who has lived at 124 East 4th Street for the last 48 years. For all of them and for me, there is something about Frank Sinatra and something about how Nick Drakitis interprets Frank Sinatra that bewitches us, that touches us. I said like painted kites Those days and nights They went flying by For the world was new Beneath the blue Umbrella skies I mean, there's a guy who lives next door And he, he, he embraced me, he hugged me this old Chinese guy, man, with a hearing aid. I'm like, I made, I touched this guy, and I don't know how I did it, but I did it. You know? Hey, now the autumn wind And the winter winds They have come And they have gone And still the days Those lonely days They go on and for any New Yorker to do something as big as this for his neighbors again and again is more than an anomaly. It is as rare and unstable as the elements at the bottom of the periodic table. The key ingredients of this event, neighborliness, generosity, free time, good weather, cooperative police officers, are hard to come by in this city, and they are nearly impossible to find together in the same place week after week. The Nick and Lorraine show has had a longer run than anyone could expect, and something, rain, or the first frost, or the ninth precinct, or a Friday night gig with the Starlight Orchestra, will soon bring it to a halt. There's a gossip columnist in the New York Post named Cindy Adams, and it is tempting to resort to her mantra, only in New York folks, only in New York, to explain this phenomenon. But in Nick's case, the wisdom of Cindy Adams does not suffice. This is not the stuff of New York, not of the real New York, or even of the New York of a bygone era, but of a mythical movie New York, a Lower East Side block built on a studio back lot. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination take a look and you'll see into your imagination will begin with a spin traveling in the world of my creation what we'll see will defy explanation If you want to view paradise Simply look around and view it PRI Public Radio International